See, tomorrow we have a quiz. There are seven problems. That's all I'm going to tell you. So what are we on law? Uh, law two? So if you graphed it, it should look something like this. Here's zero one. Did you guys get something like? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What the heck is that? Chain message. Why would he do that during school? <laughs> anyway, did you get a graph that looks like this? And what's the significance of this graph, you guys, in physics? Who's in physics right now? Karamoto, redeem yourself from yesterday. Okay. If you were to, okay, let's say you have two ah, points. Bless you. Let's say you have two points, and you just hang a chain like this. You hang it and let it, let the forces of gravity take take over. What shape is it going to be? Is it a parabola? It's a no, it's a hyperbolic cosine function. We call this a catenary. That's important in physics, you know. So if you just have two points and you suspend a rope or a chain or something like that, the shape is not a parabola. It's a catenary. It's a hyperbolic cosine function. You can impress your physics teacher with that. And then what's so important about C, the bell curve? Like if you were to graph this, you should get something that looks like this. Plot the point zero one. Why is that so important? Nobody here to, took statistics. What, what's that? Okay, you know what? When you is anybody planning on taking AP stats next year? No, I'm gonna quit math after this year. Wait a minute. So next year, you're probably going to sign up for AP Calculus, right? Either AD or BC, but then you can also take AP Statistics. Should we be taking two math classes? Some people time? do. Some people take two sciences. <laughs> like, there are people this year taking AP Chemistry and AP Biology. But that's crazy. That's like, I don't know. Anyway, okay, I'll just leave it at this. In, 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 in statistics, this is super important. You know, like, like let's say you take the... Um, that the, the readings of all the heights of all the people in the world. What would happen if you plot all the all the heights of all the people in the world? Wouldn't most of the people be near the average? And then the really tall or really short people would be on up here, right? Yeah, so we call this a normal distribution like that. So that's what happens when you have something like that. Anyway, anyway, let's see how much Mason knows. If you were to compute the area, now this graph goes forever. It keeps on getting closer and closer to the x-axis. It never gets there. 
can you compute the area of, between the x-axis and that graph? Yes, in fact, next year in calculus, you're going to do it. And you know what it is? Anybody? This is just a tidbit that you should know. Something to pi. Yeah, it has something to do with pi. Square root of pi? How do you know? I don't know. I feel like, I think you told us that last year. Really? Wow. So I just know. It is the square root of pi. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Mason. <laughs> <laughs> and then, no, and D. What did D, what did the graph of D look like? Kanamoto. Yeah, I know, but what does it look like? I can, I can read too. What does it look like? You graphed it on your calculator, right? I don't see it up on the board. Well, I do see it, no? I saw those two B on the board. Just graph all four of these on your graphing calculator and copy it down on your paper. What did it look like? Mom. Again, didn't do homework. <laughs> what are you guys waiting for? You guys got to hand in homework today, tomorrow. Yeah, I'm going to do it today. <laughs> Today. That's it already. I'm, just, I'm going back to my old grading of homework. No, my, never mind minus 2 for each wrong one. It'll be minus 5 for each wrong one. That's what's going to happen now. So pretty much two wrong problems and then you're down to the zero for tomorrow. Because you're handing in one and two, right? No more Mr. Nice Guy. You know what? Maybe we should collect homework every day. No, I should do no. Mr. Takeuchi's method. Walk around and you get zero or five. No. So these two guys, zero right here. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, I know what it looks like. Okay, what, tell, tell me what it looks like. Yeah, and, and the reason, anybody here is going to take biology? Probably. The graph looks something like this, right? That's because in real life, po this is how populations grow. They start and then... They start growing quickly, but then because of resources and things like that, it starts leveling off. Limited resources, whatever. Yeah, so that's, that's, in fact, wasn't this in your algebra 2 book, the logistic growth thing? You got it. Why do I even ask that question? Okay, number, so number three, everybody can loan me, loan me. Because you're going to have to loan me, loan me tomorrow. You might even have to hooli. And then 4C and E, okay, let's go over these graphs because you are, two of them are going to be graphs. So one of the graphs is going to involve E to the X and the other one is natural log X and then you've got to do stuff with it. So 4C. Are you kidding me? Okay, so the first thing you should do is draw the base graph. You know what? If you draw the base graph, I might give you one point. What does natural log X look like? Here's the point, one, zero, and it looks like this. You draw that, I'm going to give you a point, because I feel sorry for you. Okay, now, what do I have to do? There's two things happening. What does this do to the graph? It shifts it one to the left. And absolute value around the whole thing means everything below gets reflected above the x-axis, right? Can I do it in either order, or is there an order to it? Or this one, it doesn't matter. Well, just think about it. If I were to shift the graph left one, and then everything below gets reflected above, or what if I reflect everything below above and then shift it one to the left? Isn't it the same thing? So in this particular problem, the order doesn't matter. But then in other problems, it matters, right? Okay, so I'll shift everything one to the left. So this point comes over here, and then the vertical asymptote is now here. And make sure you put in the vertical asymptote. So it looks like this. And then now, everything below gets reflected above, and then everything above just stays. There you go. That's what the graph looks like. You're going to have to do this tomorrow. And then D, natural log. Y equal negative natural log absolute value of X. Hey, this is both natural log. You guys got the E1 down then? Or you guys think you're good then? Okay, here's natural log. What does this do? What does a minus sign reflect the graph over the? The what? <laughs> the x-axis. And what does this absolute value on the x do? Erase everything to the left of the y-axis. Keep and reflect the remaining portion over the y-axis. So does it matter which order I do it in? No. 
This one, the order doesn't matter either. So first step, reflect it over the x-axis. So now the graph looks like this. Okay. And then now erase everything to the left of the y-axis, but there's nothing there. And then you keep and reflect this over the y-axis, so it's going to look like that. So that's what the graph looks like. And we're going to be doing the same things as we go through all the functions. So next chapter, trig trigonometry, all six trig functions. You've got to know the base graph, and then you're going to have to do stuff to it. Okay, so tomorrow, one e to the x and one natural log graph, and you've got to do stuff to it. And that's it? Are you sure that's it? Because now is the time to ask, because I see, I'm looking at this page. I think most of the problems are coming from Expo Log 2 on tomorrow's quiz. No questions? And this is period three, you know. So everybody could do number eight then. Wait, can you do the domain? That's, why. That's what I thought. Because I got the one, but... Uh... Okay, number eight. F of x is equal to natural log 1 plus x over 1 minus x. Okay, how do you find the domain of a logarithmic function? The argument has to be greater than zero. You write that on your paper, I give you one point. Now you've got to solve it. Do we know how to solve inequalities? I hope so. You make one side zero. Every year I give this problem on the quiz, and every year students cannot, they don't even know that this has to be greater than zero. Make one side zero. Factor, it is. Make a number line. Negative one and one. And how do I know this one is minus plus minus? and not plus minus plus. Too bad, figure it out yourself. And we're looking for greater than zero, so it's gonna be here, so the domain is from negative one to one, not inclusive. It's easy to figure out domain. Now what about the inverse? Everybody could do the inverse? Switch to x's and y's? Okay, I wanna show you something because I, I, I don't know. So, this is like y, right? So to find the inverse, you switch the x's and y's, Except this is a y fool. And then now you need to solve for y. Now how do, how do you solve for y? What do you do? you got to get rid of this natural log, so you change it to exponential form, right? So what's the base here that's not written? E. So how do you change this to exponential form? E to the x equals this, right? Okay. Everybody can do that? Okay, well, I want to show you something, which is the same thing. Except it's a different way of thinking about it. I don't know if your teacher taught you last year. So we need to get rid of this natural log. So what you do is, instead of changing it to exponential form, which this is, that's how you learned last year, you do the inverse operation of it. What's the inverse operation of natural log? E. So what you do is you E both sides. See, if you have gorilla equal banana, then shouldn't e to the gorilla equal e to the banana? So you e both sides. So you get e to the x equals e to the natural log armadillo is just armadillo. But can you see it's the same result? That if, if you just went e to the x equals this, that's the same thing. It's just a different way of thinking about it. So if you want to get rid of natural log, you e both sides. If you want to get rid of an e, you natural log both sides. You do the inverse operation. It's the same thing as changing it to the other form, but it's just a different way of thinking about it. And then once you get over here, how do you solve for y? Cross, multiply. Now it's just algebra 1. Put all the y's on one side. I'm going to put everything on the right. y e to the x plus y. Factor out the y. And then divide. So y equal e to the x minus 1 over e to the x plus 1. Oh, shoot. And the e to the x is cancel. The 1's cancel. So you just have negative over positive, which is negative. <laughs> so that's just minus. Paul said that's the answer. <laughs> and then number 9, I'm, I'm just curious. Everybody got, because there were people coming in and saying they, they're not getting the exact answer. Like, there was one on expo log 1 and now expo log 2. You have to use all the decimal places, you know, when you... Well, we'll find out tomorrow. Correct. 
have to use all the best ways. So one way is you can just write it by hand, or you can actually use the variables. Okay, let me just explain something since we're on video. You know when you compute the, the best fit logarithmic function? I'm assuming we did it, okay? When you do it, the number for A, because what, what does it say on your calculator? Doesn't it say like A equals whatever, blah, and then B equals blah? This number is now stored in lowercase a. This number is now stored in lowercase b. So all you have to do, instead of writing it down, like writing all the decimal places out, all you got to do is says, then it says use your answer to compute f of 8. So what you need to do is plug in 8 into here. So all you have to punch in on your calculator is a plus b natural log 8. And the calculator is going to substitute these numbers for a and b with all the decimal places. But the question is, where do you get lowercase a and b on your calculator? Now, for the Casio people, I don't know. I don't know. TI people, you go to VARS. And then statistics. And then EQ for equation. And then you get all the lowercase letters there. That way, you can have the calculator do all the work. You don't have to do any work. But, it, but if you have to, write it, write it all. But you gotta use all the decimal places. You cannot just use three places. You cannot use a rounded value in another computation because then you get rounding errors. And I take off minus one for each thousandth you're off from the actual answer. So we'll see if you do it correctly. So is that it? Okay. I guess for some of you, I guess I gotta say good luck tomorrow because Usually luck has nothing to do with it, but I think for some of you, luck is going to come into play. All right, so today we are going over our properties of logarithms. So then we're going to solve the equation. Ah, come on. Okay, let's go over your three properties of logarithms. And these should look familiar. Log base b of m plus log base b of n is equal to log base b of m times n. You guys remember that? Log base b of m minus log base b of n is equal to log base b of m over n. And log base b of m to the nth power is equal to, what can you do with the power? Put it in the front. Or as Mr. Ruba says, cough up the hairball. Does he still stay and say that? Cough up the hairball. <laughs> so if you have a logarithm and you have something with a power, you can put the power in the front. Okay, so these are your three properties of logarithm. And I'll box this because this is super important. So what kind of problems can you expect to see? Okay, let me give you an easy one. Let's say log base, now let's just do natural log. Let's say natural log 2 is equal to A, natural log 3 is equal to B. Okay, let me think. Silence! Oh! Oh! Wait, it's coming to me. Shh. Write the natural log of 8. No! 0.8 repeating in terms of A and B. See how I just come up with it? Yeah, that just popped into my brain right there. Okay, write this in terms of A and B. So what do you, what do, you do? First of all, change 0.8 repeating to a, desk, to a fraction, which is? What is 0.8 we repeating? Come on. Eight ninths. Eight ninths. So that's equal to natural log of eight ninths. Now use your properties of logarithms. Is there another way I can write natural log eight ninths? Yes. What? Natural log eight. Look. Minus. Minus natural log nine. I forgot this is period three. Yeah, but Mr. Park, I only have natural log and natural log two, three here. Well, no problem. Change eight to? Two, two to the third. Change nine to? 
three to the second. Why do you want to do that? Because you can put the power in the front. Cough up the hairball. So you got three natural log two minus two natural log three. So your final answer is going to be three a minus two b. That's the kind of problems you had in your algebra two book last year. See, that's how a teacher can test to see if you know your properties of how to Okay, let's solve equations. Okay, so you got to be able to do something like that. See, let me teach you how a teacher writes problems. Like, first of all, if I want my answer to, see, if I don't care if the answer comes out nice, I just put anything on the board. But if I want my answer to come out nice, then I figure out what, what my answer is going to be first. So, let's say I want my answer to be 6. Okay, so log, I don't know what the base is yet, so log of x plus log of x, no, plus minus 2 minus log of x plus 2, what is that equal to? 6 times 4, 24 divided by 8 is 3. Is that right? 3. So I go base 9 and then 1 half. I don't know if that's right. Am I thinking correctly? I don't know. Well, let's find out. Okay, anyway. Let's see if that comes. Wait. Yeah, I think so. Okay, let's try it. So that's how I write my problem if I want my answer to come out nice. But that, what other ones? Just put anything. Okay, you should, first of all, you see these three logs, what do you want to do with them? Combine it into just one logarithm, okay? So how do you do that? You use your properties of logarithm. So this is the same thing as log base 9 of, now when they're added together, what do you do? You multiply the arguments like that. And then since this one is minus, it's divided by, and that's equal to 1 half. Now the reason why you want to write it as just one logarithm is now you change it from log form to exponential form, right? So the way that we've been learning is you just go 9 to the 1 half equals this, right? But then, okay, I'm trying to teach you this other way. If you want to get rid of a log base 9, what do you do to both sides? You do the inverse operation. What is the inverse operation of log base 9? You 9 it. If gorilla equal banana, then 9 to the gorilla equals 9 to the banana. You 9 both sides. Because what is 9 to the log base 9 of armadillo? Armadillo. And what is 9 to the 1 half? 3. So it really doesn't matter. If you, if you want to just go 9 to the half equals this, do it. But I'm, I'm just trying to teach you a fast one. To me, it's faster. And then once you do that, you just have an algebra 1 equation. Okay, how do you solve this? Rhymes at Haas, halt apply. Cross, both, you guys! Oh, it's quadratic, make one side zero. So x squared minus 5x minus 6 equals zero. Does that factor? Yeah. So two, 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 two. So x and x, what, three and two? Six and one. So minus plus. So x equals 6 or negative 1. Box that. That's the answer. See how I wanted the answer to come out to 6? But Mr. Park, where's the negative 1 coming from? That's because it came out to a quadratic, so there's going to be another one. But then if one of them is 6, the other one got to be rational, right? So it's going to come out nice anyway. So box that. That's the answer. No, minus 2. Why minus 2? Come on, people, we just talked about it five minutes ago. When you have a log function, what's the domain? When you have a log, this thing here has to be what? Greater than zero. It has to be positive. So if x is negative 1, doesn't that make the thing negative? There's no such thing as log of negative 1. Well, not for real numbers anyway. So you got to cross it out. So anytime you solve an equation with logarithms, you got to make sure that all the arguments, this, this, and this, are all positive. And they're not, so that's why you have to cross out negative 1. What about 6? Yes, 
that's six minus two and six plus two, they're all positive. So six is an answer, but negative one is not. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's say you have this. Solve this equation. Three to the x, I'll just make it simple. Three to the x equals 100. Okay, before we start this problem, tell, tell me, what, what, what is the answer going to be? Two point something, three point something, four point something, five point something, what? Four point something. Four point something, how come? Because three to the fourth is 81. Okay, because three to the fourth is 81. Three to the fifth is 243, so it's going to be somewhere in between there. Okay, but I want three decimal, you're allowed to use a calculator. Okay, so how do you... What do you do? How do you solve for x here when it's in the exponent? You use logarithm. So if you did the thing we, uh, we learned yesterday, what do you do? You change it to log form. So x equals log base 3 of 100, right? Or doing the thing I taught you today, how do you get rid of a 3? You log base 3 both sides. <laughs> So you do the inverse operation. So here, you log base 3 both sides because log base 3 of 3 to the banana is banana. And then you get log base 3 of 100, which of course is the same thing. I'm just trying to teach you something different here. Okay, now, how do you punch this in on your calculator? Because I need three decimal place accuracy. Uh, I don't know, Mr. Park, because the only buttons I have on my calculator are log base 10 and log base E. That's right. In fact, some calculators only have natural log. Wait. Where's the log base 3 button? Oh, I don't know. Maybe your calculator. Does your calculator have a log base something? It just says log. <laughs> yeah, that means base 10. Oh, oh, yeah. So how do you punch this in on your calculator if you only have log base 10 and log base E? You have to change the base. Okay, so let's review the change of base formula from last year. Log base B of A is equal to log base C of A over log base C of B. So if you have a logarithm and you don't like the base that you're working with, you can change it to any other base, base C. And it's easy. The top one goes on the top and the bottom one goes on the bottom. It's, it's ridiculously easy. Okay, so if you want to punch this on, a, on your calculator, then change the base. What, what's a good base? What do you want to do? Base E or base 10? Wrong! Now you can do base 10 if you want. But come on. I'm telling you, when you go to calculus, everything is natural log. So just get into the habit. And on my test, I'm going to say write your answer using natural log. So get into the habit of using natural log. So this is natural log 100 over natural log 3. Punch that in on your calculator now, and you should get that 4 point something. Oh, 4 point. Two. One, nine, two. That sounds about right. So if you're using your calculator and you only have base 10 and base E, then you've got to change the base. In fact, there's other problems where you've got to change the base also. Okay, last thing. Oh, we're going to finish early today. Okay, change the base. Oh, okay, here we go. Now let's do a word problem. Did everybody here take chemistry already or are you taking chemistry now, some of you? Some of you taking it now. Did you guys learn half-life? Yeah. Rate carbon dating? Yeah. Not yet? Okay, anyway, the half-life of carbon, wait, carbon-14 is an isotope, yeah? What's an isotope again? It has less or more? Less. More what? Neutrons. Neutrons. That makes it radioactive. I have no idea. I had a few <laughs> Actually, it was a D minus, but I still got credit for it. <laughs> Anything above an F is passing. Really? Yes. What, 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 what do you guys think? Anything below B is failing. I thought it was below C minus. I thought if you got a D, that yeah. was like failing. No, was no. See, you don't know anything. <laughs> and F means you failed the class. That means you... you, you See, but see, you're thinking like in math, if you don't get a C minus or better, you can't move to the next one, but you passed it. You passed that class if you got a D, but you just can't move on to the next class. You know what I'm talking about? So you get a D minus, you got credit for it, you just can't go to the next one. 
But if you need to go to the next okay, one. Okay, so if you need to go to the next one, then you got to take it again. Oh. But if you don't need, you just celebrate. I got credit for it. <laughs> okay, anyway, carbon-14 is an isotope of carbon. What is the normal number for carbon? 12? So it has two more neutrons, and that makes it radioactive? Okay, I don't, I don't really know. <laughs> neutrons, protons, what's the other one? Electrons. All I know is J.J. Thompson discovered the electron. Because Mrs. Fujinaka said it once, and I remember that. And Lowen Hook invented the microscope. Doesn't she always say that? I don't know, she said it once and I just remembered that. I don't know anything about chemistry. Anyway, we can use carbon, the, the isotope of carbon, to date not everything. What, 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 so living, no, things that yeah. lived before, living things? Things that lived before. You can't, you can't carbon date. No, you can. No. Can you carbon date like a rock? Yeah. yeah. So a rock didn't live. Oh, yes. So what, what can you carbon date? <laughs> I'm just curious. Anything that had carbon in it. Like living things and rocks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Do you have a D minus in chemistry? No, I have So you should know more than I do. Okay, but I know how to do the math. I don't know how exactly how it works, but I can do the math for it, okay? So, the half-life, so, the half, where am I there? The half-life of carbon-14 is, I think it's about 5,750 years. I, I don't know if that's the exact number. Anybody? Okay, we'll just use this number. It's around there, okay? Now, do you guys know what this means? If you have carbon-14, let's say you have 10 grams, then after this many years, it's going to half. You're going to have 5 grams. It takes that long for half of it to decay. So knowing this, we can carbon date things. So let's say, let's say you have a barbecue in your yard. You're barbecuing in the backyard, and your dog starts sniffing around and starts digging. <laughs> and then your dog pulls out a bone. And they oh, this bone looks weird. So is this bone like from the barbecue last month? Or is it from an ancient civilization long ago? Well, you, you don't know. So you take it down to your lab the laboratory. Is there a laboratory that does carbon dating in Hawaii? There must be, right? Anyway, you take it to the laboratory, and the laboratory puts it in some machine, and it'll tell you, hey, there's 40, I'll just pick a nice round number. There's 40% there's 40% of the original amount of carbon-14. We can tell exactly how old the thing is. Okay, so let's do this. So first you've got to start with the equation. Y equal Y naught. Okay, the half-life of carbon-14 is 5,750 years. What, what exponential function can I write? What do I put in parentheses here? One half. You're going to have to do this tomorrow. And then? T. Didn't we do this on Expo Lot 1? T over 5750. Okay, now how can we use this equation to carbon date this bone? Well, this is how much you started with initially. Okay, why not is how much you have at the beginning. After, after 5750 years, there's only 40% remaining. Well, what's 40% of why not? Why not is how much you started with. What's 40% of that? You gotta be kidding me. 0.4, why not? Okay, where do I plug in 0.4, why not? There's only, you got two choices. Plug it in for T or plug it in for Y. You plug it in for Y. So you plug in 0.4, why not, for Y. The why nots cancel out. And notice that the only variable you have left in the equation is t. That's the time. That's the time it's going to take for the thing to decay to 40% of what it started with. You solve for t, that tells you how old this bone is. OK, so how do you solve this? Again, the variables and the exponents, so you have to use logarithm. 
So one way to do it is you can change it. You got exponential form, change it to log form. So if you did that, what, what would you do? Change it to log form. Okay, let's go over here. If you have a equal b to the c, how do you change this to log form? C equals log base b of a, right? Because b to the c equals a. So change this to log form. t over 5750 is equal to log base 1 half. What's going on, period 3? Okay, so you can do that, and then all you have to do is multiply both sides by 5750 to solve for t, right? Okay, well, I'm going to show you something different. Okay, so this, here, no, let's just finish it. So t equals 5750 log base 1 half of 4. This is the correct answer. Okay, but now we need, this number d means nothing to you, right? You have to be able to punch this in on your calculator. How do you punch this in on your calculator? Well, do you have a log base 1 half button? No, so you have to change the base. So you would have 5750 natural log 4 over natural log of 1 half. Now you can punch this in on your calculator. Where is it? 0.4 or 4? Oh, you're right. Right there, 0.4. Okay. I told you, in the morning, sometimes when the sun comes in at the right angle, you just can't see things on the board. So just move your head. Yeah, see, look, point 0.4. No, look, for real. Like, like right here, it looks like 4, but point 0.4. Okay. Now punch this in on your calculator. Okay, but, what, okay, don't do this. But So this is one way to do it. But this is the way I do it. I have this equation. Once I see this a variable in the exponent, this is what I do. I natural log both sides. So I take this equation, I natural log both sides. See, 0.4 is there. Equals natural log of 1 half to the t over 5750. Now why do I natural log both sides? Because I can put the power in the front. Equals t over 5750, natural log of 1 half now. So to solve for t, all you got to do is multiply by 5750 which is natural log of 0.4, and then divide by natural log of 1 half, which is 0.5. And is that the same answer? Yeah. yeah. See, it's just a different way of thinking about it, but whatever, it's the same. As long as you can do it, you're fine. And then now you punch this in on your calculator, give it to me. So that means you're not even writing it down. Well, Straight I thought, two. I thought you said we're not supposed to take that. Stop repeating what I told you to. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I... We can't punch this in on the couch. Just punch it in, just like that. What is the answer supposed to be in here? I would say, don't tell me, like six, seven thousand, maybe. Okay, I don't know, I mean, I don't know. I'm just guessing. Mason? Okay, Silva. Let's ask somebody dependable. Stock is plummeting. Seven thousand six hundred and one. Seven thousand six hundred one point. You always gotta give three places. Zero eight seven. Zero eight seven. Is that correct? Yeah. So this bone is not from the barbecue last month. It is from an ancient civilization long ago. In fact, were people even on the earth at that time? Seven. When did people show up on earth? I don't even know. Come on, you guys should know this. Yeah, it was like 100,000 years ago. Oh, really? Oh, so people were alive back then. Oh, so this bone is super valuable. Are you sure? 100,000 years ago? Oh, look it up. Something like that. Is that not like... Cro Magnum, man. Uh, yeah, I don't know if they were like. Australo, no. Australo, we'll Pitta Kiss. Sixty-five million years ago. Sixty-five million years ago. That's a primate, though. Also, oh, there, but there were living things on Earth back then. Okay. All right, so there you go. So what you do? Oh, what you do? You take this bone, you go to Bishop Museum, and you sell it for ten thousand dollars. 
In fact, there's probably is once you find that bone, that there's probably more bones in your backyard. So you sell your home for like ten million dollars. Yeah, that's what you should do. I sell I sell you my property for ten million dollars. Please don't respond. How do I know if you're getting it or not? Plus, you guys don't even do your homework. I am not going to congratulate you for doing your homework. Because <laughs> that's something you're supposed to do. I will congratulate you if you did tomorrow's homework. <laughs>